Hi all, welcome back to Java Tech Booster. In my last video, we discussed about post mapping, and now in this video, we will be talking about put mapping and its implementation with Spring Boot. So let's begin. So what is put HTTP methods? Put is a HTTP handler method to modify or update a resource based on the client data. Say if you want to update the employee data into the system, put is like a post which can create or update the resources both. So what put basically does is it overrides the entire entity if it already exists or it creates a new resource if it doesn't exist. So with that now let's jump into the coding. Here I have taken the code from my last video. If you want to take this code base then follow my last video to get the get mapping implementation. On top of it we will be implementing put. So this is something which we have already discussed in the get mapping example. Now on top of it, we will be implementing put mapping. So let's begin. So the first thing that we will be doing is creating a method. For now, I will assume that it will not return anything. And what it will do is update items. Now in order to update item, it will expect the input as an item data, which needs to be updated, right? So let's use request body and it will expect the item data as request. Now in order to make this method as a put method, we have to use the annotation called put mapping and we'll provide the URL pattern as update items. Now the next thing that we will be doing is calling a service layer to update the item data. So I have already auto wired the put mapping service which I'm going to use here. So I'll use this service dot update items where I will be passing the item information. Now it is throwing me error. So let's see what is it. The method update item is undefined. So let's create a method in the service. Now here is the place where we will be implementing the logic for put mapping. So let's begin. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to check whether the incoming item exists in the items object or not and this item object is nothing but which I have hard coded here in the real time it will be coming from the database of course. So the first thing that we will do is we will check the incoming item number whether it exists in the item object or not. If yes then it will update it. If no then it will create or add. So the first piece of code that we have to write is to look up the item details in the items object. Let's do that. So we will be running a for loop where we will be calling this as a current item object and we will be iterating over the items array. So this is the items array which indicate the current items information and where we are going to iterate this. So inside this we will be having a condition which will check whether the current item current item is equal to the incoming item number. So item dot get item number considering the item number will be unique. And if it matches then what we are going to do is we will be updating. So if it matches then we have to update it. So let's do that. Current item dot set item number and here we have to pass the incoming item number value which is coming from this item request. Similarly, let's do it for other item attributes as well. So set item description where we have to pass the incoming item description. Same thing for price as well. So current item dot set item price where we have to pass the incoming item price and we are done. Now once this item is updated then we have to return uh, say for example we want to return a generic message saying that item has been updated successfully right. So after this for loop let's return a string message saying item updated successfully. So now it says is void method cannot return a value. So let's change the return type to a string. Right. So now the first part of the logic where we are going to check whether it exists or not. If yes, then we are going to update it, which is done. 
Now let's do the second portion where we are going to check if it is not there, then we will be adding it. So for that, let's create a Boolean variable. So Boolean say resource found and we will initialize this to false. Now as soon as the item number found inside this for loop, we can set this indicator as true. That means item has been found and we have updated it, right? If the item is not available after this for loop, this resource found will still be false, right? So after this for loop, we can have another condition to check what is this resource found. If it is false, that means item is not found. So in that case, we have to add it, right? So items dot add and we can pass the incoming item data. So this is the incoming item data which I have passed it to this items object. Once it is done, then we can send the message. So now in this case, we are actually adding, not updating, right? So we can just modify this saying that item added successfully. Item added successfully and we are done. Now let's go back to the controller method. So this is the update item. Now let's return this from here. So for this, we have to change the return type of this method from void to string. Now in order to run this project, we will go to Spring Boot application, right click, run as Java app. So the application has started successfully on port number 8080. So if you look here, we have get all items under this put example. And what we are doing here is we are getting all the item data, right? It returns all the item data. So under put example, get all items. So localhost 8080 put example, get all items. And if I run this, it will return me the item details, which is right now available. Now let's run the put example. So we will be creating one. The method type will be put. Okay. And the URL pattern will be, let's copy this. We go here. So localhost 8080 put example and then the request mapping for put mapping is the update items. So let's copy that and replace this get items with update items. Now in the header, we will be specifying the content type as application slash JSON. Now if I come back to this body raw and let's copy one of the request data. So this is item. Now I have copied this. So say for example, for item number one, I want to update the description as item description updated. Let's run it. So we have received a message item updated successfully and the status is 200 OK. So if I go back to the get and run it again, it will show the item description as item description updated. Let's do it for item number two as well. So I'll be using this item two data and we'll update the description. When I run this item updated successfully, let's go back here. And when I run this, see, we have updated the description for item number two also successfully. Okay, now let's try to run with a different item number. Say for example, item number four and the description will be item four description and the price is considered 400. So what we are expecting here. So when we are running this, it will actually check whether this item is available or not. If it is not there, which is in this case, it should add it, right? So let's run this. So we have got the message as item added successfully and the response code is 200. Okay. Let's go back and check whether it's been added or not. So if I run this now, yes, we have got our new item, item number four, item four description and the price is 400 got added successfully. Let's run one more item number five. If I hit send item added successfully, if I go back to get, we have got one more item getting added successfully. So this is the pure example for put mapping. So now one very important question 
is post and put. If you look at or if you remember my last video where we run the example for post, it was pretty much same as of put. Okay, so what is the difference between these two? Let's look at that. So what post does is it create a new resource. That means if it is not there, that means it will by default it will add the resource into your system. But what put does it? It creates or update if it exists. So logically, if you want to modify something or you want to check whether it's there or not, based on that you want to take a decision to modify or create, you can use put mapping. So now the next difference is post is not item potent. That means if you are trying to add an item into the system, okay. So if you are running that using post, that means the first time it will add the item. Now next time when you run it, it will say item already exists or it will uh, send or throw some constraint violation if you have trying to add it again. But put is item potent. Doesn't matter how many times you run this request, you will get the same response again and again. Now the third and very common thing is we are using annotation as at the rate post mapping for post and at the rate put mapping for put. Now one very common question that we usually get is which one we should use because technically you can use post for create and update both based on how, what logic you are implementing and same thing for put as well. So if you really want to use the post mapping then it should be for creating a resources. So it's up to you how you are segregating your code logic into these HTTP handler methods, which will actually indicate what is the operation that you are trying to achieve. So with that, we are done. And in the next video, I'll be talking about delete mapping. So stay tuned and please like and subscribe for my upcoming Java boosters.